Afternoon, Joel. Hello, Robot Super Pals. If you have a moment, and I assume you do, Frank and I would like to demonstrate an amazing new fitness product. It's called the Square Master. You see, the Square Master allows you to maximize your human potential because Square Master uses one of nature's most perfect shapes for your perfect shape. How does it work, Frank? Square Master allows you to utilize complicated principles of inertia and mass simply, efficiently, naturally. How? By using nature's perfectly balanced muscle resistant, gravity. That's right. For a beginning anaerobic workout, start with hands on the outside of the square. Then, when you're ready, go inside the square. Put your feet on the square. Sit on the square and simulate rowing. As your workout improves, you can link two squares together to form a rectangle. Now you're really working out. And for full aerobic conditioning, work on your shemp area. <laughs> the sweet secret of the Square Master is its dynamic patented square area. The exercise working. I can really feel it here. Thank you, Square Master. Square Master, $49.95 or three payments of $29.95. It's hip to be square. Your turn, Joel. <sighs> Gee, that Frank's got a cute shape. Well, of course he does. He doesn't work, and he's got oodles of time. Okay, you two, that's enough. Well, sirs, do you remember the innocence of a childhood Valentine's Day? The excitement of getting hearts and treats, and most specifically, those chalky little hearts that had cute comments that you got from somebody special? Remember? No. Oh, uh, uh it, it wasn't really that big of a deal. Uh, somebody help me out. Uh, 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 well, sirs, uh, kids used to give candy hearts with cute sayings to kids they liked. Uh, well, it's true. <laughs> Just buck up and face it. <clears throat> anyway, uh, we thought they sounded pretty neat, so we decided to bring them back for adults. Only this time we're calling them bitter sweethearts. Yeah, <laughs> because they deal with things in life that are awkward to say. <laughs> and because they deal with tougher, more upsetting issues than puppy love, we've made them into tasty, easy-to-chew antacids, which, by the way, are an excellent source of calcium. Yeah, next time you don't want to say it, don't. Let bittersweet hearts do it. Uh, like this one says, get out. Owie, owie, owie. Oh, love me. Uh, still mad. My needs. Oh, here we go. Bite me. <laughs> Drop them. I'm tested. <laughs> that hair. <laughs> uh, can't leave the county. Perfect for interventions, counseling sessions, or awkward dating situations. Look at this weird face. Uh, <laughs> you'll do. Like a brother. Ah, uh, pretty neat, huh, sirs? Does it say that on there? Oh. Uh, oh. Yeah. How sweet. Anyway, I think people should talk to one another. Gotta go. Yes, Joel. Insert perfunctory acknowledgement here. Joel, my invention today is for all the right reasons. Because stress levels aren't high enough in America, because people need to know how very important you are, and because you may be in line for a movie when that important project deadline comes and goes, I'm talking about the cellular desk. You see, with the cellular desk, I can live my job. Why, I can take an intimidating meeting anywhere. Why, just today, I was out for a walk, going through some files, and I realized that it had been a while since Frank's last employee review. Frank, could I see you in my office? I'm right here. Ah, Frank, take a seat. Frank, I was just going through some files, and I realized it had been a while since your last review. Frank, could I see the Frank I'm file? I'm right here. Ah, uncooperative. Hostile. Uncoordinated. Frank, Frank, Frank. Well, Bear Witches, whew, I'm glad we're hourly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, John Lennon said, sirs, instant karma's gonna get you, but now you can get instant karma. <laughs> That's right, Joel. <laughs> what goes around comes around, but now you don't have to wait for it. <laughs> and no more confusion about what incident correlates to what action. Mm -hmm. Just right. watch. Oh, say, Joel, mm -hmm. I just sent my whole allowance to Sally Struthers. Oh, to sponsor a child. Uh, no, for her. I just feel sorry for her. Sure, we all do. Well, <laughs> let's check out what your karma is, mister. Okay. Simply pour contents into a medium-sized mixing bowl, <laughs> mm -hmm. add water, and presto, there's your instant karma. <gasps> 
Wow! Oh, wow. Strawberry licorice? Great! Oh. Wow! Uh, oh, how about this? Uh, Servo, I cleaned yeah. up your room today because I know your arms are useless and everything. Oh, uh, th th uh, thanks, I, I think. Oh, no problem. All right, let's see what happens. Add a little water Smells to the instant good. karma. Mm. Okay, anything happening? Joel, I, I can't really explain it, but I've got this incredible sense of inner peace and well-being. And... <laughs> A Snickers bar. Here you Whoa. go. Hey, oh, lucky duck. Wow, you know, man. Um, Tom Servo, there's also uh, bad karma. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, remember the other day when you borrowed uh, Crow's Dan skin? You stretched it and then pitted it out. Yeah. Well, uh, so? Let's so, see what happens. What, we'll add a little water what here. What possibly happen Mix to me up. for oh, that yep, one? Yep, here it comes. <laughs> Oh, no, my aunt's coming to take me yes. to the Michael Bolton yes. concert. Oh, man, I'm really sorry. <laughs> well, oh, we've got some pretty it. good karma going up here on the Satellite of Love. What do you think, sirs? Hmm? Think you've got good karma, eh? Then how come you're going to be watching another Hercules film? And the very first Hercules film, the one that started it all? <laughs> well, we all shine on, don't we, Mr. Robinson? <laughs> Frank, send him the movie. I'm right. Oh. Frank? <laughs> Oh, absent. Oh, Frank, bring me that memo. Oh, Frank, bring me some coffee. Yes, I'm Dr. Forrester. I'm king of the whole world. Oh. Oh, sorry, I, I didn't mean to. I was just about to... Push uh, the button, perhaps? <laughs> you know me so well. Now remember, Hobie, you stay away from the kids down by the liquor store. Hey! Baywatch can wait for now, Frank. With the money we earn from this week's invention, we won't have to watch Baywatch. We'll be able to live it. So that means I could be just like David Hasselhoff. I better practice sucking in my gut. You're one to talk, eh, Frank? <laughs> hey! Well, Booby, our invention this week is based on those new high-priced TVs that allow you to check out several other channels on the small screens while you watch one program on the big screen. Our invention goes that one better. You see, it actually allows you to check out and see what you would be doing in your life at that moment if you weren't at home watching TV. It's called the U-View. Check it out, Frank. This is $180 coming to you for only $29. Quantities are limited. Hey, it's a beautiful, bright, sunny day out, and what's this? Michelle Pfeiffer, Deborah Winger, and Holly Hunter are motioning for me to come over and join them in a game of touch football? Wow! They needed a fourth player, and I just happened along. Wow! Hey, that's Elvis Costello. He just happened to walk by, and he's... It looks like he's asking us to come over to his house to hear some new songs he's working on. Wow! So that's what would have happened if I had gone out today. Boy, I'm really glad I stayed inside to watch Baywatch. No, try that. I'm sitting in a Perkins looking at a menu. Well, that doesn't seem to be uh, like I'm missing anything for the... Uh, uh, whoa! Wait, wait, oh, uh, Henry Kissinger and Richard Nixon are shyly approaching my table. <laughs> They're shaking my hands and patting me on the back. Uh, Henry's giving me a Kissinger and Associates sweatshirt. Nixon, is, what is he doing? He's pointing at the menu. Ah, he's recommending the club sandwich. <laughs> oh, I do love this, Frank. But not as much as I love sitting at home watching Baywatch. Oh no, I'm in big trouble. I never should have hung out with the kids down by the liquor store. Well, sirs, our invention may look like just an ordinary Weber grill, but it's much, much more than that. Yes, it's the Andrew Lloyd Weber grill. <laughs> hey, everybody, come and get it. I got a whole ream of Andrew Lloyd Weber scores, and they're all ready to barbecue. Yes, now you can take out your aggression on the theater world's most inescapable troll-like composer. Yeah, just stick any of his many overblown scores in the Andrew Lloyd Weber grill, mm. and they'll burn quickly and efficiently. Whether it's Cat or Phantom of the Opera, Starlight Express or Evita. Hey, what? Wait, I kind of like Davida. No time for sentiment, Joel. We've got to burn aspects of love and chess. Yes. <laughs> Wait a minute. Andrew Lloyd Webber didn't write chess. It was mm -hmm. Tim Rice and those guys from ABBA. <laughs> oh, I think the Andrew Lloyd Webber grill can handle them. And we might as well burn the score to Annie while we're at it. Mm. <laughs> hey, 
What do you think, sir? <coughs> oh, man. Elvis is holding up a picture of Andrew Lloyd Webber and making fun of it. Holly, Deborah, Michelle, and I are having a good laugh at his expense. We're having a great time. Why did I stay inside today? Why? 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 Oh, wow. McKenna's gold is on. Shh. I'm watching me on the U view. Michelle Pfeiffer and I have just had a fabulous date. We flew over to Paris on the Concorde for a late night dinner on the left bank. <laughs> I drove the plane for a while. <laughs> oh, what's happening? I'm dropping Michelle off at her place. She's motioning for me to come into her place. Yes, Frank, all right, woo! <laughs> you dull dog, you. <laughs> Wait a minute, what am I doing? I'm looking at my watch. I'm pulling a TV guide out from my back pocket. I'm looking at the listings. I'm telling Michelle I can't stay because I have to be home in time for Baywatch. What the hell are you thinking? Stupid idiot. Don't go. Oh, 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 push the button, Frank. Huh? No, I think you said, how are you two getting along in here? Hey! Did you, did you Nothing. Do not, did you, no, you were too. Oh, no. Cool. Um, Nancy and Sluggo are calling him. Stay away oh, from my foot. Oh, hi, Joel. That was really something. Yeah. Well, anyway, Dr. Forrester's been away since last Tuesday. I finally convinced him to go to one of his class reunions. He's got nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, so I've taken it upon myself to develop this week's invention exchange. Now, we've all heard of virtual reality, right? The gloves, the goggles, the wires. Well, I've come up with a similar concept that allows the average person to achieve that universal goal, becoming a stand-up comedian. It actually puts you inside the total comedy club environment with the laughter, the clinking glasses, the waitresses, the overpriced drinks. Uh, it's something I like to call virtual comedy. And I think it just might go a little something like this. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are a great crowd. Oh, thanks for coming out tonight. Well. What can I tell you about myself? Well, uh, I'm single. <laughs> Big surprise there, huh? <laughs> oh, thanks. You guys are great. Give yourselves a round of applause for coming out and supporting live comedy. Yeah. All this adulation can't be too oh, good right. for Frank. Okay. Let's see how he deals with a couple of oh, drunken hecklers. Oh, what else? Oh, well, I went to visit my mother. That's always a good thing to do. On the way there, I got pulled over by some you're cops. Not, God, I hate the... Huh? You're not funny. Well, you're... Uh, pretty ugly is what you are. Uh, huh? Huh? Well, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, to apply it. It's because, almost too easy. Your turn, Joel. I tell you what, I'm going to bring out your headliner right now. <laughs> well, sirs, we've all played miniature golf into the small hours, and it presents quite a few nagging questions. Like, is it really golf? No, it's not. And is it really miniature? No, not at all. It takes up a heck of a lot of space. Hence this week's invention. Not only have we taken golf and turned it truly microscopic. Witness the microscope. But micro golf really is actual golf. Here's how it works. On each of these slides is an entire golf course, combining the technical know-how of biologists like Alexander Fleming with the impeccable course design acumen of Jack Nicklaus and Chai Chai Rodriguez. Huh? Hey, uh, each course is constructed of lush E. coli, parduman specimen, and the finest subcutaneous fascia. Okay, now I use this paramecium for a seven iron, right? Uh, right, Joel. Uh, but but I consider the Euglena niblick on this shot and uh, try to put some spin on it. All in right. keeping with the grandeur of micro golf, let us speak in hushed tones. All right, and go. Robinson teed off moments ago on the short par 5 11th, normally considered a birdie hole. He really let fly using a medium shafted mitochondria. His Golgi body is sitting a neat 0 0.07 micromillimeters from the flag. Robinson really needs a birdie because the wheels have been coming off. This shot is a bit trickier than it looks, what with the lymphatic plasma to the left and the green sloping towards the nucleoli. All right, I'm lying in the pernicious anemia culture. I'm going to use my pitching wedge to loft it. Oh, the wheels really are coming off. Ugh. There they go. What do you think, sirs? 
All in all, I'm glad I went, Frank. I think I came off rather well. I didn't mean anything by that. Actually, your wife is very lovely, sir. No, please sit down. It was all in good humor. You're a really nice audience. Bounce, Frank bounce, really bounce. does stink, you know. Please. Anyway, Joe, your experiment this week has a dual purpose. Oh, it'll hurt like always. But my little trip to the alma mater reminded me that I had done some undergrad study in the field of supervillainry. I'll be conducting a little seminar after the film, taking some questions. In the meantime, please enjoy Secret Agent Super Dragon. Point zero zero four. Oh, we got to go. Look at this. We're getting this hole. <laughs> oh, hello, Joel. I was just drawing on TV's Frank what I, Dr. Clayton Forrester, was born with a cleft chin. In other words, a chin butt. <laughs> Call it what you will. The fact is, we found a new area of the human body to be ashamed of. And shame fuels the economy, from mouthwash to deodorant. Where there's shame, there's a need. And our invention exchange this week meets that need. We give you... <laughs> Chinderwear! Frank's wearing the basic brief while I'm sporting the bikini cut. It also comes in boxer, Italian bun hugger, and of course the <laughs> Joe Namath knitted slingshot brief. <laughs> They're affordable, comfortable, and leave no visible panty line. Oh, Frank, that's disgusting. If you ask me, you guys have been underground a little too long. <laughs> anyway, our invention exchange this week is based on Frank Sinatra and the Rat Pack. It's the Rat Pack chess set. Cool. You see, the Rat Pack was sort of a drinking man's Justice League of America. The closest thing to royalty our great nation has yet produced. Why, they were the kings, queens, knaves, rooks, and pawns of our popular culture. My team on my side of the board is the actual Rat Pack. Frank Sinatra, of course, yeah. Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr., Peter Lawford, yeah. Joey Bishop, plus supplemental Rat Pack members, Shirley MacLaine, Sammy Kahn, and Jilly Rizzo. And, of course, my side of the board has the Rat Pack's nemesis. Well, there's a uh, Shecky Green, mm -hmm. a Kitty Kelly, Liz <laughs> Smith, Earl Wilson, mm -hmm. Sam Giancana, Judith Exner, of course, Bobby Kennedy, Ooh. and the Dark King himself, Mitch Miller. Oh, boo. Right, okay, now how do the pieces move, you guys? Uh, well, Dean Martin can only stagger sideways across the board. Yeah. Uh, Sammy Davis Jr. can move in a variety of different ways because he's so versatile. <laughs> hey, let's face it, the man was the consummate entertainer. Mm -hmm. What about uh, Joy Bishop? He moves however Frank oh. says, baby. <laughs> right, okay. And what about uh, old Blue Eyes himself? Where does he move? Wherever the hell he wants oh, to. Right. After all, he's the chairman of the chess board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And check it out, he talks, too. Here's two bucks, doll face, because that's just what you're worth. Wow, cool. Now, uh, what about Peter Lawford over here? Well, he inevitably gets kicked off the board right. when JFK snubs Frank and stays at Bing Crosby's Palm Springs home. Well, then you can replace him with either Don Rickles, a Toot Shore, or the leggy Juliet Krause. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sometimes Dino passes out and can't continue on. In that case, Liza Minnelli, uh, being the trooper that she is, is always ready to replace him at a moment's notice. Mm. So you see, everybody, even when a game like chess is Americanized, it's still really complicated. Mm -hmm. What do you think, mm -hmm. sir? Oh, Joel. I was just... Doctor, have you seen my long underwear? I'm late for my ice dancing lesson. No, I haven't seen your long underwear, Frank. And to be perfectly honest, I wouldn't wear your long underwear even... Oh, Joel. <laughs> Invention exchange. Now, I've got a nutty idea, <laughs> but uh, be a dear and go first. Uh, I need a couple of minutes. Sure, if you're not ready to go, we'll go no problem. Typical. Jeez, yeah. foot. Yeah. Anyway, my good friend Crow locked up the deal to do the music for the Beverly Hillbillies movie. Yeah, well, we're hammering out a deal memo. And yeah. it led to an amazing discovery. Right. Now, remember the Beverly Hillbillies was part of the Paul Henning Hooterville trilogy? Right, that was the Beverly Hillbillies, yep. Green Acres, right. and Petticoat right, Junction. Right, right. Right. Uh, they all had this really cool incidental music. Yeah, it was music that went... Right. Oh, no, 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 no. If I made Joel, oh, sure. it was more like... 
The point is, I didn't know how to make that music until we came up with... The pork arena. Now, don't worry, all you pig lovers. We didn't use a real pig. We didn't. Oh. No, we just reinvented the instrument that made the original incidental music. The original was lost in the tragic Universal fire. Hey, here comes Mr. Haney pulling another hilarious flim flam. <laughs> well, Mr. Douglas, that there is a genuine dirt burger. That's not a dirt burger. And there's the efficient Miss Hathaway. Oh, Jethro! And there's Uncle Joe. He's moving kind of slow. At the junction. Well, pretty hot. Kind of tired. He's going to go fishing, but it's too damn hot. Let her sit down for a little while. Yep, yep. When's that government check coming in? Pretty hot. Kind of bloated. Gonna die soon. You're up, sirs. Joel. The human body. Unattractive? Sure. Even worse, it's inefficient. Especially Frank's human body. I'm late for my ice dancing lesson. That's why I've drained Frank's blood. You, you what? You, you can't, can't do that? Don't worry. I replaced it with propylene glycol, radiator fluid. I even surgically implanted a radiator so Frank won't overheat in the summer and won't freeze up in the winter. And you act like I'm the jerk. I'm so cold. Uh, granted, uh, Frank's new system does need to be flushed nightly, uh, but once you get the hang of it, it's not quite as tricky as it seems and can even be done on an outpatient basis. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Why don't you just leave Frank with his own blood? That way he could wear a jacket and scarf and stuff. And since Frank's blood was a previously unknown type, the money that that brings in... Why? Because it's science, that's why. Oh, Frank here. Why don't you run on to your lesson now? Come on, go ahead. Scoot, scoot. <laughs> Joel, speaking of unattractive human bodies, your movie this week, e -ga, has got Richard Keel and not much else. Look, Frank signed all the forms. It's an improvement. He even likes it. Why, he's probably out there right now skating his little heart out. Ega. <laughs> oh, God. No, oh, not now, Joel. Daddy forgot Frank's regularly scheduled maintenance. All the coolant leaked out. Seized a right up. Just got the thing paid for, too. Say, do you think maybe I could possibly get my blood back, please? Oh, you want your blood back? Fine. Baby, 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 I'll put your blood back in. I'll pour it right back in. Come on. Come on, Frank. No, 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 you know what? I don't, I don't even want it anymore. You yeah. take it. You yeah, take no, it. No, no, I insist. No, you, you take it. You have blood. Here, You baby. take it, you big, stupid, bully blood. You don't take it. On, I'm, you know what? I'm going to push the button. Oh, That's you're going right. to push the button? Go ahead, right push now. the button, Frank. I'm pushing it. Okay, right. push it then. I dare you. You need your mommy? I'm pushing the button. Oh, Joel, the stories I could tell of... Frenzy bachelor parties and exotic dancers jumping out of cakes. Sounds exciting? Sure. But around midnight, there you are, frustrated and disappointed with a fake cake you can't eat and a dancer named Candy who has to leave to drive her babysitter home. What have you got? Nothing. That's why we've combined dessert and objectifying the human body in one easy cake mix. Cake and shake. A real exotic dancer included. <laughs> That's right, Clay. Now gluttony and exploitation serves eight. And just think, now even mom, dad, and the kids can enjoy a Chippendale dancer at little Jimmy's seventh birthday party. Oh, Clay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can I tempt you with some dessert? <laughs> oh, Frank, this looks wonderful. You've outdone yourself. Uh, just a sliver. Oh, it was nothing. I merely follow the easy-to-read instructions right on the box. And hey, here's a tip. Just fold the exotic dancer right into the cake. That way you save a step. You don't have to wait for the cake to finish baking. I'll remember that for my cake for the next bake sale. You what? You baked a person in it? An hour at 3.50? Start digging, Frank. I get the rose. Just dig, Duncan Hinder. <gasps> oh, it's beefcake. Hey. Don't see, because he's... Hush. 
real anyway, bad. sirs, our invention this week is based on the old American tradition, the junk drawer. Yeah. Hey, did you know that Benjamin Franklin invented the junk drawer? And were he alive today, he might have invented the new American tradition, the junk drawer organizer. <sighs> Finally, there's a place in this world for those strange keys, ketchup packets, that linoleum knife with the point broken off, all those things that, until now, had defied the laws of sequential occurrence in space and time. Yeah, and how many times have you gone rooting through your junk drawer, muttering to yourself, where did I put that gun? Well, now there's a place for it. <laughs> and, and there's a place for round band-aids, and for that handful of gravel that might be agate, and your shoehorn, and those two-inch pieces of string that might come in handy someday. Mm-hmm. Hey, there's even a separate compartment for miscellaneous grit and lint. Already built in. So you don't have to. Well, what do you think, sirs? We could get into a lot of trouble for this, Frank. Oh, Joel, um, uh, everything's fine, nothing to see here. Uh, your feature presentation is a film called I Accuse My Parents. Uh, you figure it out. Uh, enjoy it with the short about truck farming. <laughs> We're gonna have to answer to the Chippendale Corporation for this, Frank. Oh, hey. The Jaws of Life, man! Get the Jaws of Life! Cake. Indisputably the finest. It will ram, it will pound, it will press, it will do what you want it to do. And then he humorously writes, the perfect date for Crow and Tom, which I thought was pretty funny. Good morning. I accuse you, Joel. Now, carefully hand over the hamburger sandwich. Don't let them forget the french fry potatoes garnish. Right. Uh, Joel, you magnificent bastard, I read your menu! Come on, we gotta beat Marty and Messina, maggot. Ah. Uh, what do you think, sir? <coughs> uh, sorry, Joel, uh, didn't catch that. We uh, came this close to losing, uh... Losing. Rodney. Uh, right, right, almost lost Rodney. Yeah. Is this uh, enough, Dr. F? Uh, no way, Frank. There's plenty more frosting to shovel. It, it, don't just go push the button, you freaked out maniac. Uh, look, Rodney, I'm sorry this whole thing got out of hand. I'd like to make it worth your while. To, if, oh, no, that's, that's all right. That's, you've done enough. <laughs> ah, Joel, I wonder if you wouldn't indulge me today. Uh, Frank's been down a bit lately, and, uh, well, when the poor fellow's not shuffling head down through the lab, he's locked himself in his room watching old Misfits of Science episodes. So, to pick him up, I thought I'd let him do this week's invention exchange. Really put the spark back in. <laughs> Dr. Ruff, I'm ready for this week's invention. Uh, we're ready for you, Frankie. Right. <laughs> My invention exchange this week, these fully lined leather sprinkler pants that I like to call leader hosen hosen. <laughs> Now I can shoddish while watering my plants. <laughs> In my leader hosen, hosen. <laughs> la 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 I just wanted to wear leader hosen, okay? It's a stupid invention, I admit it. I just want to be Bavarian for one brief shining moment. Is that so wrong? Oh, Frank. Yes, it is wrong, deeply wrong. But you've been under a lot of stress lately. Uh, tell you what, we'll get you an Alpen horn. Would that make you feel better? Yes. Uh, why don't you go on with your invention exchange, Jim? Uh, it's Joel, and if you'll indulge me, your hinderness, I'd like to turn over this week's invention exchange to our own Crow-T robot. Thanks, Joel. The vulture, long associated with pestilence and death, is in reality a clean and helpful bird who is quite easy to get along with. So to improve his image, I invented Sarah, the bobbing buzzard. Sarah? Yeah. Uh, based on the water-drinking bird, this friendly carrion eater cleans up roadkill or table scraps. <laughs> Great, Crow. Yeah, it kind of looks like you, Crow. <laughs> I think you'll agree there are few sights in nature as beautiful as a plump member of the Cathartidae family pulling a sinewy string of fetid meat off a weak, dead Thompson's gazelle. <laughs> There's a theme song. Want to hear it? Uh, uh, sure, Crow. Bob and Buzzard. Caw! 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 
Bob and Buzzard. Caw, 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 Bob and Buzzard. Dilly, dilly, deep. Oh, what do you think, Dilly, 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 dilly. Your movie this week, Joel, <coughs> stars the... <coughs> Ricola? Oh, thank you, Frank. Would you just get back there? Your experiment this week, Joel, stars Sean Connery's brother, Neil. And they're more than happy to tell you that. It's called Operation Double 007. And now, I have to strangle Frank. <laughs> Help! <laughs> that fanny flag is a hoot. <laughs> Derwood, it's them. Let's talk baseball. Uh, better yet, let's talk baseball sponsors. Better yet, let's just talk. <laughs> baseball, the great American pastime. But how can we, as evil scientists, hope to dilute or even destroy this great summertime event? Frank? Oh, boy. This is gonna be dark. Thanks. Our invention exchange is based roughly on the popular baseball promotion night. You know, uh, hat night, uh, sock night. Tunnel uh, of chili night. Uh, right, uh, but we've made it evil and hurtful, you know, like we like to do. <laughs> <laughs> so we've rewritten the baseball season with some unsavory and, in some cases, downright dangerous cross-promotional giveaways. <laughs> For the season opener, we have colorless, odorless, toxic gas night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this Not Whole Day special, the first 10,000 lucky kids get slide whistles. Oh, boy. And the second lucky 10,000 kids get real brass knuckles. Then the first 10,000 lucky kids become unlucky. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> This symbol here represents the lovable, huggable San Diego chicken, which must mean it just happens to be crossbow night. <laughs> Frank, right on. Give me five. Oh, <laughs> you are righteous. <laughs> then there's the promotional tie-in. The beauty of this concept is, is that it hurts the company supplying the product as well as the fan themselves. Dow Corning presents fiberglass insulation night. Park Davis presents used syringe night. Tires Plus presents the peppermint schnapps tire iron double <laughs> Hitter. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's about as evil as it gets, don't you think, Joel? Mm -hmm. Oh, sure, sir. That's real evil. Of course it is. <laughs> well, our invention exchange this week is based on some foot fashions and some clever wordplay. Tom? Thanks, Joel. Say, ever notice how the trendy shoes Doc Martens and the name of the popular mad cartoonist Don Martin almost sound the same? Well, we did. Right, and our take a walk on the wild side department has converted the command table to a high fashion walkway to present Doc Martens for Don Martin, Joel. Yes, yes. Don Martin, the maddest of the mad cartoonists, has a real flair for drawing funny footwear. And Doc Martin's British shoe importer also has a real flair for making and selling funny footwear. So I say come on. Uh, what do you think, Chester Bester Tester? Joel, sure. what would you say if I told you I've invented a low-cost, low-maintenance household device that could easily last for a decade or more? <laughs> say hello to Frank's heart. <laughs> You've invented Frank's heart? <laughs> no, silly boy, I've, I've harnessed Frank's heart. I was uh, cleaning the snakes out of the pantry yesterday when suddenly it hit me. Nothing works harder than the human heart, especially when it's clogged with cholesterol. Uh, now, Frank's heart was a mess, and it's getting worse all the time. Rest was easy. Frank eats, I surgically attach a generator to his heart, and voila, the cholesterol do all. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, here you go, Frank. Uh, what, yeah, right there. Um, oh, and I've got to whip you up some eggs, Frank, and your turban's slowing down, so eat some of that pie, will you? Uh, uh, you see, it's simple and efficient, and uh, I can run a blender. And uh, a toothbrush, and a room fan, and a radio, and a garage door opener, and an art welder. <laughs> well, at some point this will kill Frank, but I think it's worth it.
<laughs> An EKG does this work great. <laughs> Frank, eat! Joel? Oh, sure, that's great, Dr. F, for you. Uh, anyway, up here on the Satellite of Love, where life's generally bright and cheery, we've decided that backwards masking has gotten kind of a bad reputation. Hardly surprising, really. Right under our noses, thrash, metal bands, giving us all backwards messages to worship Satan and the like. <laughs> Sheesh! So we've come up with Backtalk. It's a backwards masking personal memo machine that helps you remember things subliminally. Right. But first of all, start with some nice, pleasant music. Oh, there now, isn't that nice? And simply tape your message to yourself backwards. Right, let's say I'm an executive and I want to leave a memo to myself. I'd leave a message like this. Uh, to cart, knock, to bluff, to ubla, nod, kasa. <laughs> then, Ask the next day... about we'll write contract. <laughs> it's fun! <laughs> it is! You get to talk backwards. Try it, Tom. Art led pate oop reb memir. Remember to tape Delta. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this will be invaluable for business persons, students, homemakers, teachers, cutlery salesmen, congressional aides, barbers, rubber novelty district representatives, gym teachers, that big guy. Uh, the crow. Huh? That, that's plenty. What, what do you think, sirs? Keep going, Frank. I've still got a vacuum under the couch. <laughs> Oh, good one, Frank. Uh, Lassie is an animal and therefore not subject to the same moral or ethical code that human beings are. Otherwise, they'd all be arrested for public nudity. Huh. Got a point. Yeah, makes sense. What do you think, sirs? I'm going to bed. <coughs> Frank! <coughs> Frank! Frank! Frank, no! Hi, Joel. Uh, Frank's dead again. <laughs> Well, I gotta go out and buy him a new heart now. Like there's not enough I gotta do around here. Ooh. I'm coming, jeez! <laughs> oh, hello, Booby. Say, do you want to make people's heads explode? Sure, we all do. Well, my invention exchange this week is a study guide I put together called the Scanner Planner. It's filled with lots of life's little instructions on how you can scan people's brains and make their heads explode. Now, the first thing you'll need for your scanning is a good subject, someone who's your moral and intellectual inferior. I wonder who that could be. Hi, Dr. Forrester. What you doing? Hey, you were scanning me, weren't you? You tried to make my head explode, you freaked out maniac. Oh, oh. This could take a while, Joel. Back up to you. Sirs, when are you going to realize that when you kill each other, you're only hurting yourselves? <laughs> anyway, our invention exchange is based on one of the century's safest, softest, and funnest concepts, the wiffle ball. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. And we've taken the whole wiffle concept and siphoned it through our own madcap, irreverent viewpoint. <laughs> For instance, there's the wiffle hat. <laughs> it's lighter, cooler, and more comfortable than any ordinary hat. <laughs> and there's the uh, Wiffle glass. Oh, yeah. Makes any soft drink Wifflicious. <laughs> well, we haven't uh, quite worked out all the kinks uh, yet, uh, but I've come up with something even cooler. Oh. Wiffle cheese. Hey, wait a minute. This is just Swiss cheese. That's right. It's nature's own Wiffle. That's right. And think of the possibilities. They're endless. Wiffle cat, mm -hmm. Wiffle dog, Wiffle roach motel. Wiffle sports jacket, Wiffle replacement hip, Wiffle underpants. Wiffle shoehorn, Wiffle apartment building, Wiffle Claude Aiken. Wiffle! Wiffle. What do you think, sirs? What? Oh, Joel. Uh, your movie this week is your first Western. It's called Gunslinger, and it stars Beverly Garland in her pre doty period. Beverly Garland? <laughs> it was also directed by Roger Corman, so your hits may explode before Frank's does. Yippee-ki-yay, Mama Jama. Oh, oh, he made my head explode. Ooh. Thank you, Dr. Forrester. Oh, Thank, you. Oh, we got <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wow, it worked. I blew Frank's head up. Well, remind me to snap on a new one, Joel. Until next time. Oh. 
okay in this? Oh, let me see. Oh, <laughs> that's my old head. <laughs> Just file that under Frank's first head, okay? Right. Oh, hi, Joel. Uh, look, we're way too busy to even do an invention this week. We're being audited. You go right ahead, though. It's a Doc Tari stool. <laughs> what do you think, sirs? Doc Tari stool? Whatever. Anyway, Joel, it's a madhouse down here. Uh, we're being audited by the Fraternal Order of Mad Science. You know, one of those are you really mad enough sort of things. Frank? <laughs> Free Jarvik Sevens. Put them in the junk drawer. Jeez, didn't the temp agency test you on any of this stuff? Well, I'm a little off my game. I'm not normally required to wear a leg iron like this. Say, what is the deal with this guy and those cute robots? Listen, Mr. $4.25 an hour. You stick with the boxes, and I'll handle the experiment. Is that all right with you? Frank, can I see you a minute? Sure thing, Dr. F. Say, Steve, this temp stuff is working out great, don't you think? Well, I'm so glad your little friend is working out so nicely, Frank. Now, what about sending Joel the movie, you boob? Oh, the movie, the movie, the movie. Oh, for the love of the movie. Oh, Frank, look. Remember? The double butt graft. My science project from Evil Oaks. I grafted the butt of a dog onto the butt of a cat. Sure, they all laugh. Dr. F, the movie, the movie. Oh, right. Uh, here it is. Mitchell, starring Joe Don Baker. You guys watch Joe Don Baker movies? Oh, look, just get back to work, temp boy. Right. Well, here it comes, Joel. Mitchell, it's a uh, super secret spy has a motorcycle marooned in space meets Hercules or not. Uh, watch it and weep, Joel Prawl Mall. Send him the movie, Frank. Frank, the movie 